the film is a wonderful opportunity to bring out the importance of a community-based center, a center for community learning. What we're really working with at the Senior Center is an expression and being able to use that medium in any way. There is something to be learned, but it's also social emphasis. I see it continuing in a lot of very active and creative ways, as it is today. I also think that there will be different needs for seniors. A lot of people would come for the meals. They do quite a little bit with the yoga exercise groups. They offer blood pressure screenings and foot care, that kind of thing. But as far as being a center for important things for seniors to learn about, they're beginning to see that seniors are going to live a lot longer and that they'll need more activities and that they need to continue bringing in new people who could afford the classes. And that was one of the reasons I decided not to charge for my class anymore, because it's become more of a group and it's self-perpetuating. What I'd like to see is more newer people come to the group. I have people in my class who have said they couldn't continue with a class that charges money for the class. They just wanted a place and a time to come and be sociable, get out of the house a little bit, bring their paints, and share what they do. So there's a place for that, too. And that's what my group has come. And it's their group now. And that's what I'd like to see. That it will propel itself into the future. I want to be a part of it, of course. I used to do a lot more of the actual skill teaching. And one of the books that I liked the best was Ted Kautsky's book, Ways with Watercolor. I should probably have this book by my bed, so if I ever had to leave the house in a hurry, this would go with me. It's my instrument. It has everything a watercolorist needs to know about basic color, basic palette, and techniques for applying the pigment onto the paper. Georgia O'Keeffe said in her biographical interview, videotaped around 1979 or 80, quote, I thought there was someone who could teach me how to paint landscapes. I found out that all they could teach me was to how to paint their landscape, not how to paint mine. All you can do is try to paint your landscape. Sit in front of it and all you can do is try, unquote. I use a lot of primary source-like quotes in my teaching because I think it gives you an idea of how that artist is really thinking. When you look at the brush strokes in a work by Monet or Van Gogh, two of my favorite impressionists, and you can feel the motion and the emotion coming from their brush and their color. You can almost visualize how they are painting. So there's a whole lot of thought go through your mind as you paint. Do I have enough contrast? Where is the light coming from? Is this too big an area of ocean? Is this too little of a pattern? Or what do I want to say anyway? So it's a little bit like the Zen of tennis. All right, 
you hit the ball, face the net, then turn your side to the net, get your back swing ready, and then shift the weight from when you see the ball coming, and it's all that coordination of hitting the ball. Now, if you think of all those things while you're trying to hit the ball, the ball will go right by you because you can't think that fast. But your body will know it eventually. What they're doing is defining themselves in that space of the court. And it's very like that when you're an artist. The metaphor can go so far, but you can see that your body will learn the brush stroke. The body will learn to scatter the red leaves, scatter the color a little. But it also might be a good idea to figure out if you want a sense of confusion of color. Some artists are very good at that. Just noise, just like jazz, and some more orderly, peaceful paintings. Arthur Wesley Dow was a noted artist teacher who lived in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Frederick C. Moffat wrote this about Arthur Wesley Dow, who lived from 1852 to 1922. Quote, line, notan, and color. This is the trinity of power, unquote. Arthur Wesley Dow. From a letter written to a student in 1893, Dow describes a typical lesson, quote, Pin paper to a board. Do not overload the brush. Hold brush perpendicularly. Draw without resting your hand, just as if you were playing with it. You can make a stroke in any direction with perfect freedom. The brush is a wonderful instrument, as it is capable of expressing any kind of texture and of making lines of varied thickness, noting how beautifully the lines are placed within the border of the picture and how they cut up the space in an interesting way. Painting is merely the cutting up of space by line and then adding color, but you must first learn how to manage the lines. The Japanese excel in this, hence I send you a Japanese book as the best model. Draw little squares, or rather rectangles, and sketch into them some scenes which you have observed yourself. See if you can't make up some as good. Washes? You can put a very few pale washes of red in parts of your sketches." Unquote. It's interesting how Dow suggests holding the brush upright as if you were doing sumie painting in the Japanese style. And that's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to load your brush with varying amounts of pigment and water to get just the right tone throughout your brush stroke. I was interested in teaching because I got started thinking about the job I had as a secretary at the Harvard Observatory <laughs> and beginning to think that I really didn't want to be a typist all my life, but I wanted to do something else. So I went to the Shady Hills School where I had been as a student in the early days. And this was a couple of years after college, and I went back as an apprentice in their apprentice program in science because they had an opening in the science department. I learned a lot from that, mainly that I was interested in the earth sciences, but not so interested in the life sciences. I didn't really understand the animal world very well, but I liked geology and the astronomy. So I got thinking about what I would do if I could combine the earth science with my teaching of art. And I had taken some classes in Rockport and had done some watercolor. 
and I was a little bit jealous of the apprentice who was apprenticing in the studio because I think I really would have enjoyed learning from people like Adelaide Spruill who wrote the books that I have used. And one of the basic uses of art is using the natural resources, using patterns that you see in nature, and especially patterns of sand, patterns of leaves, patterns of rocks. (laughs) So I got interested in teaching, and I did teach for three years in Denver. Then I came back, and along with raising a family, I started thinking about teaching art as a recreation. And that's where I went to the Brattleboro Recreation Department. And they said, well, we have a room up there on the third floor. Why don't you use it if you like? And so a small group of us started up there, people like George Audette and Helen Flood, Francis Sargent, and a number of others. And we grew. And then I went over to the St. Michael's School and taught school there and I had my certificate to teach K through 12 so I could also teach anything but I also had my art degree and kept up my art credentials with workshops and that kind of thing and so the teaching really was a wonderful experience in how different people learn and how different people teach because I think I was much more liberal than what I call the project artists who use a lot of art in their classroom teaching. And I was reminded of that when at St. Michael's School, the first grade teacher asked me what materials I would need for the next year. And I said, well, I think I'd probably need a ream of all the different colors. And so she put in for her supplies, she was going to make Easter bunnies. So that would mean, let's see, she had 18 children in the class. So she'd need 18 blue sheets and 18 brown sheets and 18 perhaps not only more than nine because the bunny's tail was a little smaller than the rest of it so maybe nine sheets of white and then I began realizing I was not a project artist I was a freeform artist Basically, I followed the Vermont art curriculum. You learn about the colors, you learn about line, you learn about shading. And aren't those the three things that Arthur Dow said? Line, noton, which is the shade, and color. And those are the three elements that I believe are the basis of all art teaching. It's really been interesting going back to the senior center, where I've been 20 years now, and forming a different kind of group. When I was working there, I went up with the director to a forum for senior art and activities directors. One of the films I saw was about an artist named Don Sanceri. He had his group work with brushes, I think acrylics or oils, canvas. He did not downgrade anything that they did. It wasn't a matter of grading. It was a matter of activity. And I begin to realize as people come out of surgery or people come out of different kinds of trauma that art can be not only a mental therapy, but it is definitely a physical therapy. His work was shown all over Vermont in different exhibits, and the students enjoyed it. Many of them were in their 70s and 80s, older. And that gave me a little bit of a boost as to what I would do with a watercolor group. And I think that's really what we have been trying to do in our senior center. Not that you can't learn skills. You can always learn new skills. And these people have worked all their lives in art in some way. I had art teachers from the high school. I had people who were carpenters, people who were ministers, people who worked with people, all kinds of teachers. And I think when they retired, they thought, aha, 
Now, I don't have to walk out of the room when the art teacher comes in. I can be in that room. I think it provided us seniors, and I really don't like that word, but that's the word that is used, are more mature, grown-up people who are not in the workplace anymore can find a place where there's a different kind of work. And it's a work on keeping your interests paramount to your health. Most of my philosophy has to do with observation of nature and rendering just a part of that in some way that it's sort of frozen a moment, but also an extraordinary phenomenon. I think you have to have contrast. I think you have to have proportion. I think you have to have some kind of interest in the painting, and it has to have light. What do you want to say about what you're looking at? What is it that Winslow Homer had to capture and tell? What do you have to say about the world you're living in? I think that's part of what artists do. Do you have to have a purpose for it? Is it something just you like to do? Is it just healthy? It makes you feel better after having done it. it makes you feel as if you've learned something and observe something and you then know it. Well, there are times I think I did my best work about 20 years ago. And then there are times I think that's not the point of my continuing. My point to continue is to turn and go in another direction. I don't want to ever get stuck in watercolor, but I'm trying to do certain different effects now. One of the things I have to keep reminding myself is light in the painting. Don't get it muddy. And in watercolor, you really have to keep your colors transparent. You build on them, glazes, but you need to keep them pure. And part of that is using good paper, fresh water, fresh pigment every day. Try not to use the old stuff. We're all influenced a little bit with the ones that have gone before and the ones that are still working. You can't really separate yourself out entirely from everybody else's work. But what you want to do is maintain your standard of what you do and how you do it and figure what is really you. What is your cartouche on it? What makes this your painting and not somebody else's identity? always interested in the patterns. It's where I'm at. Wherever I am, I try to paint where I am. If I'm at the senior center, I notice at this time I've stepped back from the actual teaching of skills unless somebody needs a little help with something and wants that help, and I'm glad to give them help. The senior center recreation department has an opportunity to provide art classes for not just the seniors, but for children as well. And I would like very much to see more children's art classes at the Recreation Department, which is where I started.
When I moved up to Brattleboro, a lot of our painting groups like to paint this view from Barrows Road, which is off of Ames Hill Road, near where my house is. And uh, as you see in the very, very far distance, a little bit of Monadnock. One of the problems with mountains is I, I think that we tend to think of them as pyramids. We want to have them symmetrical, but they're not symmetrical. There's always a long slope and then a steep slope. This was one of my early attempts to uh, capture the character of Round Mountain and the fields in the snow time. One of the other favorite spots is down by the Retreat Meadows and I've often liked to paint there in many different seasons. In mud season, which is just before the final thaw, uh, where these shacks uh, used by the ice fishermen would sink, they are dragged off near the road. And uh, I thought they were kind of an interesting subject to paint. We take our group up to South Pond in Marlboro nearly every summer. And uh, this particular July day, it, there were many, many different kinds of clouds. And I tried to experiment with the crisp edge on the right, upper right. So I used a paper towel for that technique. And then I let the other just wash down into a rainy type of cloud on the left. And it was kind of an in and out day and I tried to get the reflection of that feeling in the water and on the mountains and behind. Our watercolor group has painted so many places and the most important thing is to find a good parking space. And one of the uh, things we think about is where we can paint safely and uh, Dummerston Center is a very good place and uh, the Memorial Park, the top of the park uh, is a good place and the Creamery Bridge uh, was a good place but I think maybe it will be a better place and around and about you'll find many different places. We even climbed Mount Wantastiquit and looked at Brattleboro from halfway up the mountain. And I remember inveterate hikers carrying all their equipment up the mountain to paint. So we've had a lot of fun and uh, we end up sometimes with lunch and we sometimes end up with uh, something that we can uh, enjoy and sometimes we put them all in the bureau drawer and don't take them out for another year or two and then find that we have something that wasn't so bad after all.